Welcome to A Lunch with Biggie, a podcast about small businesses and creatives sharing their stories and inspiring you. Today, I have the honor and the privilege to hang out with one of my good friends during my lunch break, uh, Kelly Brock from Brott's Beard Care. He is the, the head beard, I would say, um, in his line of beard products. And I, I look forward to definitely chatting with him and introducing you guys to him and having him tell your story. Um, thank you so much, Kelly, for, uh, for coming in and, uh, and spending some time with me today. Hey, Biggie, it's absolutely my pleasure, man. Awesome, man. Well, we've known each other for a few years now. And so I definitely, one thing I can definitely say is that I've kind of, I've, I usually lean to you a lot because you've been doing events a way longer than I have. Um, but before we get into those type of questions and, and ideas, one of the things that I had for you was, um, I want you to be able to tell folks a little bit about how you started the business. I know you started in 2014. Um, I want you to, I kind of want to know how, how did you go about it? Like what made you want to actually start, you know, Bratz Beard Care? Yeah, uh, well, actually in 2014, when it kind of began, um, I really had no intention of it being a business. Um, I was really just at that point, like most guys who, you know, have grown out a beard or started growing a beard and, and was dealing with some of the frustrations of, you know, the beard being itchy and just uncomfortable and wanting to keep it, but wanting to shave it because I didn't like how it felt. Um, and I just knew that there had to be a product out there that would, would kind of help me with that. Um, I tried all the traditional stuff like soaps and shampoos and lotions and things like that. And nothing ever really seemed to work. Um, and it was around that time that I found my first beard oil. Um, I think I spent somewhere between like 25 and $30 on it and I got it, opened it up and I absolutely hated it. Um, the smell was just horrendous. Um, and it's one of those companies that, you know, they were one of the first and one of the biggest national companies doing it. Um, and it just kind of, I guess in my search of finding them, um, I had come across uh, some opportunities or some sites that, that kind of told you how to make your own product. Um, and I really just started making it just for myself with, with absolutely no intention of it becoming a business. Um, but when I did make it, um, I had a little bit of extra and I started just kind of sharing it with friends and they liked it. They were receptive to it. And I think that's when the light bulb kind of went off and I decided that, you know, I, I might actually pursue it as, as, a, as a business. That, that's awesome, man. That, and and it was kind of, I was kind of curious. That was one of the big things I was trying to figure out was like, how did you come up? Like, how, did, how have you come up with like the formulas? Was it like YouTube? You just started basically YouTubing it, started just like looking things up. What made you kind of like, how did you even get to that point? Because, you know, obviously when you're experimenting, like you said, you're, you know, you're not buying things in one in quantities of one, you have to, you know, obviously grab a bunch. So it's like, where did you get all that research, do your research at? Right. Um, you know, I mean, there, there were a couple of places. I mean, all, it all really was online, but, but as you mentioned, like YouTube was one good resource um, where you actually saw some videos of, of people, you know, creating the, the you know, the, the formulas um, and you could visually see it. Um, a lot of websites, you know, that had blogs and things like that, that you could read about it. And I really just started experimenting a little bit. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing, um, but just kind of playing a little bit. And, you know, once I kind of started to come across some things that, that worked well for me, mm -hmm. you know, then I started to, to want to take it a little bit more seriously. And I really tried to, to get out there and educate myself um, and figure out, you know, what, you know, oils would work well. Um, you know, there's some sites that I found that actually gave some suggestions on what essential oils blended uh, well together. Um, you know, so it's, it's kind of that old adage of, you know, you don't have to, you know, recreate the wheel. Someone's already done it. Um, so I was able to kind of take some of their information and then make some adaptations, you know, to do things that I wanted to do with it. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of the big thing for you is the, is the key. I think when you're creating something is making it to your, your flavor, your style, your, your sense, things right. that you're going to like. So it's like, you kind of like at least learn the foundation from there. So that's great. Um, where do you actually get your inspiration from, from like the different scents and come up with? Cause you've been, a. it's really been amazing to see from the time I've known you and we've known each other now for since I've owned, since I've started the business. So I, at least, I want to say at least seven, six, seven years, I've been in the mm -hmm. business eight, but I started doing outdoor events and you were one of the first ones that I kind of got drawn to and started talking to. And um, and I've seen like the progression, like you kind of had, you know, I think you initially started, you know, with how many cents and then now you've kind of, where, where have you developed to? Yeah. Well, I mean, as far as the number of cents, um, 
you know, I mean, it all started with one scent, uh, and that was the cinnamon vanilla blend, and that was really just a personal preference. I mean, I, I love this, you know, the smell of cinnamon. Um, when I started the business, I, I had four original scents uh, that were, were part of my my line, and then now I think if you if you add in my uh, seasonal blends, I have somewhere close to fifteen different uh, variations. Um, and as far as like getting inspiration, I mean, they come from different places. Um, you know, some of them are you know things that are you know, kind of popular, uh, in, in culture, uh, you know, the, like a, like the chai tea latte kind of thing or the pumpkin spice, um, you know, or if it's a holiday blend, I want to do something that, that is definitely more seasonal that way. Um, a funny story is one of my, or actually my most popular blend, the autumn wood, uh, is something that, uh, an ex-girlfriend suggested. And I was really resistant to doing it because I just wasn't <laughs> a fan of sandalwood. Yeah. And um, oddly enough, after we broke up, we uh, I started playing around with it, and it and it ended up being a scent that I really enjoyed. And to this day, it's my my best selling scent. So you know, um, I can attest it's actually a, it's one of the ones I have <laughs> in my house. I actually have quite a collection of your oil. So um, depending on my mood, so it's definitely uh, you know definitely great stuff. That's awesome. It's yeah, and I was and I think that's kind of the the one thing I think that I I think is important to kind of to go is that you started off. I mean, obviously you, everyone ha starts off with ideas of going bigger and grander. Um, and sometimes you kind of have to ho harness yourself back in a little bit and be like, mm -hmm. okay, let's, let's start with like a foundation. Let's do these right first. And then from there, let's start building from there um, and not over kind of getting to the point where you're over, overdoing it or overstepping your, your area, um, you know, or over, you know, kind of, you don't want to overextend yourself really. Absolutely. And, and for me, that's, I mean, that's something I've done from the start with this business, you know, you know, in every aspect from, you know, creating different scents to, uh, you know, how much inventory, how much product I make, even, you know, what events I do. Um, it's always been that process that, you know, I wanted to kind of do it slow and steady and make sure that I, that I almost in a sense mastered the craft along the way, yeah. uh, rather than kind of getting, you know, over my head and, and doing things that, you know, that weren't at, at the quality and, and level that I wanted to be at. Makes sense. What one of the so one of the big things that I saw, and I know that obviously we we have a pandemic now, um, but you know, like I mentioned earlier, the, one of the the ways that I met you was going and actually doing um, was at events. Um, and for you, when you were when you were looking at events and doing events, were there were there certain things or certain guidelines that you were kind of using to figure out like, hey, this event may be a good event for me? Um, you know, is there any like little are there any things that you're kind of learning because obviously right now we're at a, we're at a spot right now where people are starting to do more events like you and I are doing you know I'm kind of do your I noticed that you're kind of doing more more events than you were in 2020 um you know are there things that you are looking into of like hey I, I think this might be a good event for me what are what are things that you think um people should look out to or look into when they're looking at make you know choosing a a possible event to vend at yeah. Well, I mean, I think that really depends on, on who you are, you know, kind of what stage you are in your business, you know, and if, if you look at it kind of pre pandemic, um, you know, of doing five years of events, you know, I, I got to the point where I could figure out, you know, looking at an event, what was, you know, if I was going to be successful at or not successful at. Um, and for me, it really came down to, you know, a little bit of the oddly enough, the age group of the, of the people that were going to be shopping at the event. Um, you know, and for me, I was kind of, you know, targeting that, you know, 25 to maybe 50 or 60 year old range. Um, and that was really kind of the sweet spot, anything older or younger than that, you know, it just, just didn't really play well. Um, you know, as you look at, you know, things kind of coming out of the pandemic. Yeah. I mean, there was a time where, you know, I didn't want to do any events cause we just didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Um, and then at this point, you know, it's, you know, I'm really just, you know, I'm looking for opportunities. So, you know, it, they may be events that I, I may not have, you know, prior to the pandemic, I may not have done. Um, but now I just, I just want that exposure. I want, I want to get out there and let people, you know, kind of see my business again um, and just kind of go from there. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it's one thing that I think is, you know, as you're new in the business or you're new to events, you have to just really try a lot of stuff when it comes to the events to figure out what works best for you. Because um, I know you and I've done some events together and, and there are certain events that I'll kill it at and you'll have just an okay, you know, event. 
And then vice versa, you know, we'll go to one and, and you're just crushing it. And I'm like, okay, no one wants my beard stuff. Um, so you really just have to kind of just, you have to get out there and try it and see what works and then, you know, but keep track of it and figure out, you know, and you'll learn, you know, what, what works best for you and your product. Yeah. And I, and I, and I think that's, I kind of, the way I've kind of looked at or taken events um, in the years of doing events and stuff is, you know, obviously I always try to grab the positive of the, the event. So what can I learn from the event? in the sense of maybe I learned something new to do, my setup, um, you know, something to that effect. Maybe it's um, more people, you know, I try to spin it in a positive way. Like, you know, even though maybe people didn't buy from me as much as I really want them to buy from me, um, I, you know, I got to introduce myself to a lot of people and a lot of people got to find out right. who I was, tell people what my brand is about, um, you know, and I think that's kind of really important to be able to look at when you're doing these things is you're supposed to take the opportunity as a positive every single time that you're in front of the public, whether you're selling or not selling, I think it's very important to be able to have that aspect of the public being, you know, you're, you're, it's another way of people, once again, brand exposure, people getting to know who you mm -hmm. are, know what your brand's about, um, you know, getting to hear you talk, like, and especially for you, being able to tell them, hey, I make this, I do small batches, um, you know, it's like, I, it's homemade, and like, and, I, and these are the things I do, and the, also the fact that, you know, you're then able to then explain to them, this is how I came about, it. I came about these ideas, um, you know, and it's like a, numerous times I have people come to my events and just start asking me like, hey, what made you come up with that shirt, or what made you do this, and I, I enjoy that. And sometimes it doesn't lead to a sale, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't stay there in your minds. They start following you on social media and right. start having a conversation, right? And like, and that's one of the things that I love. Like I love um, a lot of times when I sell, I'm usually selling next to you. It's uh, and so a lot of times I love hearing people, you know, you being able to tell people about like, hey, this is how I started, you know, this is how I started it, this is what I did. And then and then you can then go the route of like, hey, I now have the soap. And I now have beard balm, you know, right. and, and I think that's important. Start a business, we all want immediate gratification. However, you know, like we were talking, it's like kind of like a slow build sometimes, you know, how do you measure success? Yeah, I know, you know I couldn't agree more, man. I, um, you know, people definitely, uh, you know, they love the story, you know, they want to know, you know, who the maker is and, and kind of the story behind it. And, and to me, I think that's what differentiates, you know, my beard oil from the hundreds or thousands of other beard oils out there. Same thing for you. Um, you know, it, it distinguishes between someone buying your brand or your t-shirt or your hat versus, you know, the, the thousands of, of options out there for, yeah. for a product. Um, and you, and I, I love, you know, kind of what you touched on there, you know, saying that, you know, you take the positive out of every like opportunity or event um, because yeah, I, I, I do the same thing. I mean, you know, I, I've done a lot of events where, you know, maybe at the end of the day, I look at the, the sales number and it's not the number that I wanted it to be. Yeah. But, um, but if you think about, okay, you know, I, 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 I introduced, you know, so many people to my business and now they know about it. Um, and one thing that I've always um, really tried to do, and this kind of ties into, I think one reason why, um, you know, I was able to do well during the pandemic without doing a lot of events is I've always made sure that, you know, when I have that interaction with somebody, even if they don't buy, or, well, if they buy, and even if they don't buy, I always hand them a card. Um, I let them know, you know, what I do that I offer, you know, all of my products on the website, free shipping. Um, and I always make sure that they are aware of that. Um, so even if they don't buy from me that day, then they, they know about the other avenues or channels where they can find me or, or, or get my product. Yeah. And I think I, I absolutely agree. I think it's like, you're, you're always on, uh, it's always another opportunity to tell someone. Um, the other big thing is when you were talking about your, your customers and the demographic, um, one of the things that I find interesting is that a lot of times it's not, it's not like, yeah, it's, you would think it's automatically, you would think, okay, it's the bearded, it's the bearded guy, 25, you know, like the bearded person, the bearded guy. But mm -hmm. in reality, one of your big customers is really, it's, it's the female population because they're the ones that don't know one, don't know what to buy someone. Um, so kind of touch on that, like on that aspect of like, you know, did you, did you think of that when you originally, like, was that something that you kind of realized or as time went on, obviously you started realizing like, oh, like, like I'm getting, it's not just the one population. It's actually females as well that are like just as important in, in you know, selling my product. You know, it, it's funny that you say that because that is not something I expected at all. Um, I, I think when I, you know, 
did my first event, I thought, okay, I'm just going to be talking to a bunch of guys with beards and, and they're going to buy my product. Um, I quickly figured out that that was not the case. Um, you know, just, you know, when you look at the types of events we do, um, I think there are a lot more females that come to those events and shop than there are males in general. Um, but also, you know, the, the product is, is definitely, you know, I mean, when somebody walks up to my table, no matter what, whether they have a beard, whether they're male or female, I mean, that's a potential person because, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you know, I have women come up and say, well, I don't have a beard. And I'll say, but do you know somebody with a beard? And they're like, oh yeah, I do. You know, my brother or my, my boyfriend or my father or somebody. Um, and you're right. I mean, this is a great gift for someone. Um, and if I can, you know, talk to any person and let them know about it, um, then that definitely, you know, is an opportunity that, that for me to, to let somebody know about my, you know, what I have to offer. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, I don't have the exact numbers, but, yeah. you know, I bet if I was able to run a report and tell you, you know, how many men and how many women purchase my product, it's probably over 50% um, are women that are buying it for somebody. That's awesome. Um, obviously, no conversation with me can be complete without having the conversation of sandwiches. So um, I need to know what do you have? Do you have a favorite sandwich? Is it something that you, uh, you typically eat uh, or enjoy? Um, obviously not when you're selling, but you know, when, uh, when you have an opportunity to, to enjoy a good sandwich. Uh, well, who says you can't eat a sandwich while you're selling, you know, mm. it's, but it, I mean, it becomes tough when I do that. Like I never, I'm never is. a fan of eating and selling because right. I feel like it always, they always get me when I'm like with my mouth, like I'm taking a bite and then you're like, Oh, oh and you're like, and you want to talk to them and then they don't want to come to, they don't want to bother you. So then right. I just don't eat basically is what happens. I just end up drinking protein drinks and snacks yeah. um, is what I end up doing. Well, you know, my years of working in retail have, have, you know, given me that experience of how to eat super fast um, <laughs> and eat when you can. But um, to, you know, to talk about like my favorite sandwich um, for me, it's a muffalata. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of that combination of, you know, the different meats on there that give you that, you know, the kind of the salty aspect of it. The olive tapenade is amazing. Um, you know, I love a muffalata that's, a, you know, they toast the bread a little bit. So it's mm -hmm. got a little bit of a crunch to it as well. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's by far my favorite sandwich. Uh, but I mean, there's a ton of other sandwiches that, that I, that I love to eat as well. So yeah. no, I totally, I totally get that. What, um, I guess what's one for thinking when you're like, you know, one of the big things I think that I always find, I find humorous, like even, uh, when we, la when we last sold together, um, one of the big things that I always, I always appreciate is that the little things that people, um, learn from us. Um, you know, and, and obviously, I, and I'm always learning as well. So like, we're always, obviously you're always learning. And I feel like I'm always soaking in when I go to an event, like I see what other vendors are doing. Um, but um, I kind of wanted to kind of get an idea because one of the things that I always find humorous is that um, you and I obviously use table rise, uh, bed risers right. uh, for our tables. And I think it blows people's minds when they think about like the, it's like the little things um, like that, that we, you know, that we learn um, from folks and, you know, and, and it's something that I, I'm always wanting to share, you know, I'm like, Hey, you should get a bed riser. Cause if you put a bed riser on the table, you know, no one wants to bend down, especially in your products, you know, being, you know, small, you know, being a lot smaller, you know, right. you want them to be a little bit higher up. What other, what other things would you recommend or, you know, especially since people are doing more outdoor events, are there, what tips, um, or suggestions would you give someone for, you know, having this when they're selling outside to be prepared for it, uh, make life a little bit easier or, or maybe become a little bit more successful? Oh, wow. Um, you know, it's so funny that you say that because there's, there's so many and, you know, over the years, sometimes you lose track of where you learn about a certain tip or, or what, you know, a certain tip is. Um, but yeah, the bed risers, you know, for me are amazing because it does just elevate that product and bring it up, you know, at a higher level, closer to the customer. Um, you know, I, I've got a great set of, of lights that I use, um, you know, for night events. And, uh, um, it was actually another vendor that, that you and I both know that, that, that kind of turned me on to those. And I mean, they're, they're super easy to put up. They're plastic. They don't break. They're really bright. Um, and they're, they're like, they're camping lights is essentially what they are. Um, but no one else has, has ever had them. Like I've only seen two vendors, you know, put yeah. those on their tents. Um, Gosh, I don't know. I mean, for me, like my uh, one thing that's helped me a little bit is my tablecloth that I use uh, is is a, like a polyester that's wrinkle free. 
Um, so I don't have to iron it. I don't have to worry about it ever, you know, looking nice or, yeah. or being wrinkled. Um, so that's one thing that, that kind of makes things a little bit easier. Um, I think even just whatever you can do to organize yourself and, and simplify, you know, your display as much as you can, um, can kind of help take some of that pressure off of, of the setup and the teardown and all that. And you can actually enjoy the experience of the day. Mm -hmm. And I think also one of the big ones, which I always, I always remember hearing stories from you telling me about, Hey, I went to this event and the person didn't bring, uh, bring weights or weigh down their tent and it got windy and it just literally went off and like flew away like a kite. Um, I never forget that. And I'm always, because of that, I always make sure even, even like the, of course, if I'm doing an indoor event, then I won't bring it. But if I'm doing an outdoor event, like there's always, always something attached to my, the feet of my, uh, of my tent for that, um, for that reason. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that is um, yesterday, I did an event yesterday and the vendor next to me didn't have any tent weights. And the winds were 15 to 20 mile an hour winds. And I, the first thing it is, is I'm helping her kind of put up her tent. I was like, hey, do you, do you have your weights with you? And she's like, oh, no, I, I didn't bring any weights. And I'm like, uh oh, um, you know, so I was she had kind of the strings, you know, on her tent. So we tied her strings to my weights. Uh, and then there was actually a, a piece of kind of a wooden frame behind. So we actually had her tied down on three different sides. And there were, there were times where the wind would blow her tent and it kind of lifted it up. And if we hadn't tied them to my stuff, it would have blown away. Um, but I think, you know, the one thing to keep in mind, and, and it all depends on where you're doing events, um, you know, with you and I being in Florida, you know, the weathers and the storms can be really unpredictable. Yeah. Um, so for me, you know, the one thing that makes it successful is to be prepared for anything. Um, so, you know, your, your tent weights, cause you never know when the wind's going to come along, you know, having sides for your tent. Um, uh, something that I learned from, uh, some of the local farmers markets is they actually suggest that you have like a blue tarp, um, that is, if the wind comes or rain comes along really fast and you don't have time to cover anything up, you can just whip that tarp out and just cover your stuff really fast. Um, so really it's just about being prepared, you know, for anything that could potentially happen, um, to the event. That's really actually really smart. To, yeah, especially in my world, my world when it rains, I'm, I freak out because um, with all my shirts and everything, it's, it's definitely a, a difficult situation. So I totally get that. Um, if someone were, I guess my big thing would be if, if you, you from what you've learned, because you've been doing this now for what, over seven years? uh yeah i mean uh, yeah it's it's six about six and a half years if, if you if you take it back to the time where i just started making product for myself yeah if you um, were talking to kelly like the kelly of now based on all the knowledge and everything you've learned to the talking to talk now to the you know kelly you starting out what advice do you think you'd give yourself would you you know what are things that you're like man i really wish i knew this or i really would tell myself this um, is there anything that you would kind of want to share to your, with yourself, um, you know, if you, as you were starting on this journey of doing a uh, beard care? Yeah. You know, um, this is actually something I learned along the way. Um, and, and I, I now have kind of adopted it and, and I, you know, I sort of practice this myself, but, you know, early on, you know, when I was creating this business, I mean, it, it's, it's a form of putting yourself out there. And I was always really, uh, concerned with everything that I, that I, every label, every name, everything had to be perfect. Um, and I, I don't know where I heard this, but somebody along the way said, Hey, you know what? It's never for you. It's never going to be perfect. Uh, and sometimes you just have to just get it out there and just see what happens. Um, cause you can always change. You can always adjust. You can always make improvements. And so for me is, you know, it's just you know, my advice to myself and anyone starting out is just get started. Um, just get something out there, get it going. And then you can kind of figure out um, and make those tweaks and adjustments to, to get it the way you want it to be. You know, but if you, if you wait until, you know, everything is perfect, you never get started and you'll never do it. That's, that is like, so, so true. I actually gave myself uh, one of my things that my mantras that I've been trying to follow or one of my little goals of the year is telling myself progress, not perfection. I basically, you know, move forward. That's actually one of the reasons, you know, and that's a perfect, a perfect uh, like kind of share because um, I was just telling you before we started, I actually recorded with you a year ago, exactly um, a podcast, same similar concept of what I'm doing right exactly now, um, a year ago. 
And I basically made myself want to be like, oh, no, it's not perfect. I don't have this. I don't have that. And I gave myself every excuse there was to never start. And uh, until I kind of came to the, this idea that you're basically realization, obviously you're way wiser than I am, um, you know, was that, hey, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just start it and it'll get better. Um, and that's kind of exactly how this podcast even started with it. Right. And that's why I was like excited to have you on because then it's like I finally can actually air this or at least like publish this so people can listen to it, um, which I think is awesome. So, yeah, I definitely think it's uh wouldn't it be, you know, it's definitely something that I appreciate it. And I totally agree with you on that aspect of that, for sure. Yeah. Um, let's, I wanted to talk about, because when you were talking about, you, you kind of had it in the back, I had it in the back of my mind after you and I, after you mentioned things about having to do with um, how you've progressed and built. Um, one of the things that I've noticed that you've kind of gotten more involved with is actually getting more creative in your, in beard, in your beard oils. Um, I know I just saw recently that you, um, you know, based on some of your videos and stuff that they would be, um, that you started using a whiskey barrel, like you started using a barrel um, for it. So, right. so go on. So we, um, we were talking about the, the, your barrels that you started using to, uh, to, for your, for your, for your oils. Uh, yeah. So, um, you know, I, that, that was just, I don't even know exactly where the light bulb, you know, kind of went off on that, but um, you know, part of it was just over the years, I had, you know, different customers and, and people that I would interact with that, that had asked me, you know, Hey, can you ever do something that smells like, you know, whiskey, or can you do something that smells like bourbon? Um, and, and I, I think I've come across a couple of beard companies that have done something similar to that, but I didn't quite really know their process. Um, but yeah, it just, you know, I, it was something I wanted to try and, and I wanted it to, to be unique. Um, and what I ended up doing and, and I'm going to continue to do is, um, you know, I basically purchased a little one liter, um, oak whiskey barrel that is made to, that you can age, you know, any kind of whiskey or liquor in there. Um, and I just wanted it to, you know, to, to, to kind of tap into that, that whole, you know, small batch handcrafted, very artisanal type, you know, product. Um, so yeah, so I took a whiskey and I aged it in that barrel um, for a couple of months, uh, which is the, kind of the equivalent of, of a year of aging a, a whiskey uh, in a larger barrel, um, took that whiskey out. And then I added my my base uh, kind of unscented beard oil into that and let that age for a couple of months um, and just just to see what would happen. And, um, you know, I, I didn't know if it was going to work. Um, you know, it wasn't that big of a risk because I was doing a sm kind of a small batch on it, um, which yeah. is, again, getting back to, you know, that that do things in small steps and, and kind of build on it. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually worked out really well. Um, I, I sold my last bottle of it a couple of days ago. Awesome. Um, I've got a, uh, a, a spiced rum that's aging in a barrel right now. Uh, so kind of for a father's day release, um, I'm going to do a, a, a spiced rum aged, you know, beard oil. Um, again, I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, I won't really know for a couple months uh, until I pull it out of the barrel. And if it yeah. works great, if it doesn't, you know, it, it's just one of those things that, that you learn along the way. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it, it, you know, I, I've always felt like I wasn't a, a person that was creative. Like, you know, I'm not an artist, you know, I can't sing, you know, I can't play music, anything like that. Um, but I, but I think in my own way, I think that I do have some creativity when it comes yeah. to, you know, seeing things like that, that I like and, and, and want to do, and, and I'm able to kind of identify it and, and be creative in my own way, um, which I think that's the cool thing about, you know, doing your own business. Uh, you know, everybody's got, you know, a cool, unique talent or, or creativity that they can, can, you know, kind of, you know, showcase in some way. For sure. Um, Kelly, share with the, share with our listeners, what, um, where they can find you, where they can interact with you, maybe ask um, if they have any, you know, if they have any beard care tips or need help, they can reach out to you. Where uh, where can they find you on social and uh, and website? Yeah, so on uh, you know across social, uh, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, uh, my handle is at Brots Beard Care. Um, also, they can reach out to me through my website, which is BrotsBeardCare.com. Um, but yeah, I, I welcome any questions, comments. Um, you know, for me, it's not. I mean, obviously, it's a business, and I'm you know I'm trying to sell my product. But for me, you know, it's more about just that, that education, you know, if I can talk to somebody and provide them some kind of information to help them, you know, with their, their beard journey, then that's, that's really what, what's, you know, the fun thing for me with, with all of that. 
Yeah, and I definitely, uh, I'm starting to like all the videos of you uh, kind of telling people a little bit about some of the stuff, especially since I think one of the nice things about it is that with you doing some of the videos and the reels, people are experiencing or seeing um, the same effect or the same experience that they would have if they met you one-on-one -on -one or met you at an event. Um, they can still get that experience just from hearing, you know, kind of where the thought process was um, for those events online. So I think that's really, really, really great. Um, well, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for Kelly from Brots Beard Care for being on and having lunch with me. Um, definitely make sure to check them out online, brotsbeardcare.com. Um, if you've enjoyed the show, make sure to subscribe. Um, definitely check out um, Kelly and his stuff. Um, if you have a beard, I definitely recommend it. I've been using his stuff for, you know, so he's been in business for almost seven years. I've been wearing it for about seven years. Um, and if you definitely like the show and you want to support me, by all means, besides subscribing, check out delifreshthreads.com uh, and do some shopping and tell your friends. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Kelly, for your time. Um, and remember, keep eating sandwiches and follow your passion. See you guys next week. Thanks, guys. Bye.